Hi there everyone, I'm sure you've all received an email at some point with that little paper clip telling you there's an attachment. You might think that is a very modern thing, but here at the Royal Society in the Archives, a place full of letters, sometimes you find attachments here too, isn't that right Keith? It is, and sometimes they're really quite interesting ones. We've got three different letters here for you that all have attachments that have caught Keith's eye, so you know they're going to be incredibly exciting if they've caught Keith's eye. Well, fairly interesting. <laughs> we'll see. This one's in French, isn't okay, it? Okay, yeah, so we've got a French letter here from Mons 1779. Monsieur? Monsieur, yeah, okay. That's where it ends for me. So this, we can see, is from Jean-Antoine André, and he's writing into the Royal Society, as many people were at this point, with a great new idea or invention that he's got. And the thing that he's interested in touting to the Royal Society is a dye stuff, so he wants to dye silk, he's found an exciting new way to do it, and in addition to the letter telling the Royal Society about this, he sends an attachment. Alright, he sends in some actual silk that he's dyed, I believe. That's exactly right. Are you ready? Here we go. Have a look at that. And the colour is still absolutely beautiful. It's like a it? almost metallic pink. 1779, not yeah. bad. Look at yeah. that. Amazing. So there we are, a nice silk waistcoat in that kind of material would suit you very well, Brady. I'd certainly wear that. Little bow tie or cravat there for Keith. I think you could pull that off. I think I could pull that off. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so I know what you're all thinking. After that beautiful piece of shocking pink, Keith's going to have something even more colourful in the next letter. That's right, isn't it? Ah, uh, if you like grey. <laughs> What do we got? So this is a rather nice sequence of letters, again to do with chemistry, and letters concerning Charles Hatchett, a great late 18th and particularly early 19th century chemist. He's well known for discovering columbium, niobium, and here we have people writing to him about all manner of things. But they know he's a chemist, they know he's interested in new ideas, so they send him things as well. All sorts of just general letters here and... Oh! It's this little portrait of Sir Joseph Banks, oh. president of the Royal Society. That's not part of of today's video but there we go a little portrait of banks let's have a look and just see what is coming again from france so here we have richard chenevix sending hatchet a letter it's from 1820 now mostly it's about wine there's some kind of discussion going on where this chap in France is going to send Hatchet a bottle or some bottles of wine. Mm. And basically yeah. they talk for ages about the wine and where it should be sent and when the wine should be bottled. That's and exactly right. And mm. he criticises the, the French method of making wine. How, how dare he? Right at the end of the letter here, the correspondent, Richard Chinovic, says, I send a little piece of paper made out of potato peelings. It is grey and another piece made of luzerne. And here they are. Here are the attachments. Now why he thought Hatchet was interested in this we're not entirely sure. But you know it's a piece of unusual early 19th century paper. That's quite nice I think. And a good use for your potato peelings. A piece of paper made of potato peelings. There it is. Yep. And, and You saw it here first. You saw it here first. And a piece of paper made of luzerne. What is that? We'll look it up. We'll look up what Luzerne is later on, because we've got no Wi-Fi down here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the 1820s. We're moving on into the 19th century. So this is from the 1840s. And we have a little collection of letters here sent to Sir Henry James, who's an army colonel. He works for the Ordnance Survey. But these letters aren't army, they're from the Admiralty. You can see here, dear Colonel James, your paper about the copper is one of much interest as well as great importance. Copper, and why would the Admiralty be interested? in that because copper is on the bottom of ships it's yeah. what we watch sheathe them and you can see that from the little newspaper cutting there there's a little newspaper cutting here to go with the letters and it says corrosion of copper on ships bottoms because you never want corroding copper on your bottom do you you don't so they're trying to find find alloys that would make it last longer here we have some of henry james's copper specimens so these were sent along with all this correspondence mm -hmm. and here wow this one says, Dr. Percy's specimens of copper, put with salt water, 3rd of December, 1848. They're not just talking about the experiments that are being done on these copper specimens, they're sending in the specimens themselves. 
So this piece has come from a ship called the Frolic. So we have this handy list that's been provided for us here. And number four, copper from the Frolic. 97 grains, so it's five by 15, two equals 15 inches. And there it is in the packet. It says this specimen was very thin and some holes appeared in it on the 28th of January. Small specks of copper also appeared in the deposit. So they're describing the action of salt water on the copper strip. Here's number five. There's not much there for number five, probably. No, there's a blank space here, but it says good clean colour. Oh, look at that. It is. There it's it in is. great condition. Yeah, yeah. There's copper number five. Question mark. So they're not quite clear what kind of copper it is. Mystery copper. I think that one's got arsenic in it, so should we leave that one in there? Yeah, best not licking it, Brady. All right. <laughs> Because I do like to lick most of the specimens Yes, I, we had realised that. <laughs> Number three here, Keith. Yeah, this is a copper alloy. It says, the water was but little discoloured from the specimen, but there was a hard coating of a dark green colour, which I removed with my nail with difficulty. This may account for the gain in weight. So he's saying that the salt water did have an impact on this one, I think. This is a big one, this one. This is a good chunky one, yeah. This is phosphorated copper. This is quite weighty, this piece. So this is electrolyte. And again, it says, color of the smooth side, rather dark. There we go. And if I turn it around and show you the, the lighter side, that's not smooth. That's a more kind of coppery, goldy, browny color. But the piece of paper that it's been wrapped in is what caught your eye, isn't it, Keith? Well, yeah, I, I get very excited about little things like this. And you can see here, it's quite worn because of the copper. This is a form letter signed by Charles Richard Weld, and it's talking about the Royal Society's anniversary meeting, which every year is on the 30th of November, in this case in 1848. But here he's noting that the elections for the president and council are taking place, and presumably asking Weld to come along. So this is his invitation to come to the Royal Society's big annual day, mm -hmm. and he's gone, oh, that's a handy piece of paper. I'll use that to wrap my copper specimen. That's exactly right, yeah. Like fish and chip wrapper. Indeed, yeah. Could there be undiscovered attachments in some of these letters? And Yeah, and of course we're getting new material in all the time. Very often you might find little extras in there. People might have pressed plants in there, they might have put something important in there, there might be a photograph in there of a loved one. Very often these things will just pop out as you're cataloguing a set of papers. Like a little, like a little present. Yeah, a little, little extra, a little Easter egg if you like. So we have a bunch of minerals. All of this presumably has come from Russia. They were mined yes, or that, found that's in right. Russia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Each one's got a label. There are two elephants in the room. Let's deal with them first. This one is falling apart. <laughs> that's right. It's, it's presumably reacting to the air or to moisture. And as you can see, it's crumbling quite nicely there. And according to my list of contents, that is actually pyrite made from iron and sulfur. 